Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. <laughs> I love Fridays. Even when you love what you do, Friday's still awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming back today. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to day five of the self care challenge. It's Friday. We did it. <laughs> We made it to Friday and we learned a lot about life changing self love habits. I want to talk to you today about something that can really change your life for the better. Today's habit is the act of forgiveness and how it can free you to move on from past hurts and pain. The challenge in forgiveness is that it isn't cut and dry. And it isn't something you can do one time and it's over. Frequently, the act of forgiveness is more like a daily routine, just like taking a shower. When there has been a betrayal, a loss of friendship, or the end of a relationship, many people, including me, get stuck in a place of pain. Even when you work through the pain and you begin to feel happy, you can be haunted by the circumstance or by the person who caused you the pain. Pain has this boomerang effect. Good visual, huh? <laughs> that, and only you can stop it. Only you can stop the boomerang because it just keeps coming back to you. So until you can fully forgive who or what has hurt you, including yourself, the pain will be your unwanted constant companion. It's possible that it's time for you to embrace the freedom of forgiveness so that you can be set free. We all go through tough times in our lives and sometimes people can hurt us deeply. It's not easy to let go of the hurt and pain caused by someone else's actions, especially if it was intentional, especially if it was repeated. But holding on to anger and resentment can be toxic to our emotional and mental health in the long run. I know it can be challenging, but it's important to remember that it's a process and it rarely comes easy. It may require practice and you may need to repeat it, which is why I suggest it become a habit. And the tip at the end here um, shows you how to make it a habit. So just bear with me because it's something that's changed my life and it's something you can do really easy and it doesn't take time. So, okay. So forgiveness is not about letting someone off the hook for their actions. Instead, it's about freeing yourself from the negative emotions and energy that are holding you back. When someone hurts you, a common and understandable reaction is anger. It's actually part of the grieving process. It's a natural thing that happens. Anger in and of itself is not the problem. It is what you do with the anger that will help or hurt you. Anger can be the catalyst for great change if you express your emotions and assert your needs. According to the University of California at Berkeley, um, they did a, um, some research and it's anger helps you cope with the stress by first like discharging this tension in your body. And by doing so, it actually calms your nerves. That's why when you've maybe had an angry reaction, you feel really calm after. So in that way, anger can be good because you get it out and it calms you down. But chronic anger, anger that's felt every day, does begin to negatively affect your daily life. There's another study that showed that uh, people who hang on to grudges are more likely to experience severe depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And it, can, and it can be your heart, it can be your nerves, it just has so many negative things um, that happen to your body when you hold that anger inside. They suggest that the act of forgiveness counteracts these negative physical conditions. It is the antidote to the pain that accompanies anger. Forgiveness is not just about saying the words. It is an active process in which you make a conscious decision to let go of negative feelings, whether the person deserves it or not. So my personal story, 
I had been actively trying to forgive my ex-husband for years, but I kept backsliding. It was like that anger was a high school bully that kept coming around to haunt me. But instead of my lunch money, that bully wanted my happiness. But I found my practice, I found my mantra that set me free, 12 words. I found it in the book, The Secret. And these words were, I forgive you, I release you, I want you to be happy. That became my habit, saying those words over and over and over again. I shared them with my children, my friends, my family, to hold myself accountable to take this final step in healing. I needed to do this for me. It worked. I was able to quit being angry and I was able to let go of the pain. And yet there was one more step. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> so I want to share with you the process that I use with my clients. That's been very helpful with my clients. Um, I learned about it from my friend Kay and she shared a book with me. The book is called the art of forgiving when you need to forgive and don't know how. And the book is by Lewis Smeads. He provides three stages of forgiveness, which really spoke to me. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of story behind the, this, these three steps for me. But step one, one of the key things to do is to see the humanity of the other person. Recognize that they are a flawed human being just like you with their own struggles, their own fears and weaknesses. It may be hard to put yourself in their shoes and understand their perspective, but it's important to acknowledge that they made a mistake and that perhaps they are also hurting. Many of us subconsciously fear that our forgiveness would excuse what the other person has done. But forgiveness doesn't condone behavior, just like apologies don't erase the fact that it happened. What it does do is acknowledge that you and the other person are human and you also make mistakes. So step one is see the humanity of the other person. Step two is to surrender your right to get even. This means letting go of the desire for revenge or justice. Seeking revenge or holding on to that anger towards the other person will only keep you stuck in the past. Instead, focus on moving forward and finding peace within yourself. The way Smeads explains it, when we're in pain, we are reserving the right for vengeance. But we must learn that vengeance is not going to give us happiness. Being in a new, safe place, living your life in a new, safe way, and creating that daily existence for yourself will make the necessity for vengeance melt away, melt like snow. Can you find a way to look at every situation that involves the other person with a loving eye? Can you look at every situation through the lens of love? Think of a camera. You're able to turn, turn the dial on the lens and you can make everything blurry. That's what it feels like when you're angry. Everything's blurry, fuzzy, and you can't see clearly. But a simple turn of the dial and everything becomes clear and focused. That's what happens when you look at the situation with love. Vengeance is not only unhealthy, but could potentially devastate you further. And more, import more importantly, to seek vengeance could end up hurting your family and friends. It's hard to swallow. There are going to be no repercussions for the acts of betrayal that occurred. That's right, you're letting it go. What is done is done. You let the fantasy of vengeance just slip through your fingers like water. Yeah, let the water fall to the ground and get soaked up by the earth. You don't need vengeance. So step one was see the humanity of the other person. And step two is let go of the need for vengeance. Step three, is revise your feelings about the situation. Revise your feelings about the other person. This step 
involves changing the way you feel about the past and replacing those negative feelings with positive ones like compassion, empathy, and understanding. By revising your feelings, you can free yourself from the pain and move towards a more positive, fulfilling life. Smeet says that when we give up our right to get even and we see the offender's humanity, our feelings will change. Where before we felt hate, passive or aggressive, it can be replaced with forgiveness. It can be hard for you to conceive of wishing happiness when someone has hurt you. I understand. My lens became more clear when I was introduced to the book, The Secret, and it gave me those 12 words I mentioned before. It took practice, but it would bring me peace and joy, allowing me to move on with more finality. Those 12 powerful words, I forgive you, I release you, I want you to be happy. I was reluctant to wish my ex-husband happiness because it meant he was going to go be happy with the other person that caused me so much pain. Although I was reluctant and hesitant at first, once I began to feel the intent behind my words, the more real it became. In reality, I was also wishing those same things for myself. It was me who needed to be released. It was me who needed happiness. And I held the key to unlock those things for myself. This was my miracle. I could find a way to forgive, to release, and to wish happiness for the two people who had hurt me, who had hurt me most. And, and it was grace I was receiving. I was taking back my power and shining light into my own life. No matter how much my friends and family loved me and helped me, this was something I had to do for myself. I know it can be scary to be vulnerable and open yourself up to the possibility of being hurt again even, but forgiveness does involve trusting yourself again and getting back out there. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And remember that forgiveness is a process. It may take time to fully forgive someone, but by taking these steps, you can start to let go of the past and move towards a brighter future. Trust me, you're going to feel so much lighter and happier when you do. So my final step in the road to forgiveness was forgiving myself. Many people have asked me what was the greatest lesson I learned on the Camino. And my answer has always been that I started to forgive my ex-husband and more importantly, myself. And I get funny looks on the second part of that statement. I just see this question in their eyes like, what do you mean? Why did you need to forgive yourself? And, and this is why. I had always been a strong person and someone that my friends and family could count on. I was a joyful person. I loved to give. I loved to volunteer. I could also be stubbornly focused on achieving a goal. But when it came time to protect myself from the person I loved the most, I failed. I failed to stand up for myself. I failed to recognize what was right in front of me. I didn't leave when I could see I was unloved. And I didn't stay married like I had dreamed. I had failed. You know, when I wrote my book, The Swipe Right Effect, it gave more weight to the statement that I had to forgive myself. Just as I continually worked to forgive other people, I continued the work toward my own forgiveness. So I had to look in the mirror and say it. Kelly, I forgive you. I release you. I wish you happiness. You are loved. You are more than enough. And the best is yet to come. It was the biggest thing I've ever done for myself was forgive me. So I was released so I could have happiness. So here's the habit. It's called the Ho'oponopono prayer. I saw in a, a Gabby Bernstein email a few days ago that she uses the mantra, peace begins with me. And that's what I think this Ho'oponopono prayer is about. It really resonates with me because I've been using the Hawaiian prayer for a long time um, as my morning meditation. And the prayer is very simple, 
but very powerful. It serves two functions, communicating a wish for reconciliation, and, a, and it's a tool for restoring self-love and balance. See why I want you to do it? <laughs> self-love, self-care. Pono actually means balance, as in life balance. The full phrase has the intention of moving things back into balance. So when I'm laying in bed in the morning, I recite the Ho'opono Pono prayer multiple times. Um, when I first started doing it, I would do it 10 times. It's so short, you'll see, it's so easy. But it's four little phrases. I am sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. That's the whole prayer. But if used repetitively, this powerful prayer is intended to cleanse your body, cleanse your soul of any guilt, shame, ill will, or negative thoughts. It has given me so much peace and it has helped me maintain that peace. It helped me develop self-love and self-esteem at times I really needed it. So when I shared the prayer, this prayer with the women at my retreat this past November, the effect was beautiful. More than one person shed a tear because they felt the release of the forgiveness. It was amazing. We were standing on hanging rock, looking out over the ocean, and you could just see the release. It was gorgeous. It's something you should do daily. So I hope that you will, um, let me say it one more time. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. So do it daily. Even if there's not somebody you're mad at, you can say this to yourself. It's important. So I hope you'll give it a shot. So I'll, real quick, I'm going to go over today because I want to review the five habits very quickly. I apologize. <laughs> but um, day one was your self-love mantra, looking in the mirror and saying, you are enough. I love you. You are worthy. Day two was building your workshop or your nest and going there daily to work on yourself, giving yourself a place for your heart, mind, and soul self-care. Day three was reframing. We learned three tips on how to reframe. They were, this will look different next year, next month, next week. Have I considered the possibility that, dot, 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 and you could be right, is the third one. Yesterday, we learned gratitude practices, the gratitude wake up of thank you when you put your feet on the floor in the morning, gratitude dust, looking at your smile and your actions and your thoughts as gratitude dust when and share it with the world it makes you feel good and the end of day gratitude practice to stand in front of the mirror when you brush your teeth and list three things that happened today that for which you are grateful and today we'll review forgiveness see the person's humanity the next step is to surrender your right to get even and then revise your feelings about the situation, even if that's yourself. So thank you for your time today. Um, watch in the, the Facebook group link um, uh, to the masterclass that I'm going to be doing next week. I'll give you the date and time and a link to the Zoom. We'll be doing it by Zoom so we can see each other and have a conversation I, um, I'll be reviewing some of this and I'll actually be giving some more healthy habits that you can do in the masterclass. And um, I really hope to see you there. And again, you know, book a call with me if you need to talk about this. I, I understand a lot of this can be triggering and that it's hard work, but I am happy to hop on a call with anybody for one hour and hear your story and share any strategies that I can offer to help your life get more full, more joyful. Um, we all deserve to live a fulfilling life. And I want that for you. If you go to my website, ckcollins.co.co, um, there's a link there to book a call. It's on every page. Um, you should be able to easily find it. So do that. Book a call with me. And let's talk about how we can make your life better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the emails and the texts and the phone calls um, saying thank you to me. I am grateful for you. I am grateful that you are showing up for yourself. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you.